In this chapter, we will discuss approaches to cell counting. The use case where this technology is widely used is cell growth, also known as cell proliferation studies. Here, plates with many small wells are filled with living cells and treated with different compounds to study their effect. The number of cells or their phenotype is tracked over time to determine the impact of the compounds. In this example, we see a study showing a cell line in three different experimental conditions, imaged every few hours. We can see a difference in count and also phenotype. A challenge with live cell imaging is that slides can't be stained to make the cells easier to count because it would disrupt the function and likely kill them. Instead, they are counted using standard bright field microscopy and can benefit from computer vision approaches to counting. Another use case is with histology slides. Here, identifying the cell nuclei is difficult because they can be viewed from different perspectives which cause the nuclei to vary in their appearance. First, let's look at a classic approach to cell counting, which is implemented in tools such as ImageJ or Cell Profiler. First, a binary segmentation is created, possibly by thresholding. Then, some processing will fill in the objects to make more clear circles. Then, a watershed algorithm based on the circular nature of cells is used to separate cells which are grouped together. And finally, each unique segmented area is considered a cell and counted. This approach is straightforward and continues to be popular. However, they have issues when being applied to new images and need to be reconfigured to account for changes in light, cell size, magnification, and camera artifacts. In order to automate this task, we need labels. Existing methods have their limits and drawing a segmentation for each cell manually is very labor intensive. One very straightforward approach is to simply put a single pixel dot in the center of each cell. This is already what is done for manual cell counting tools in image J. We can use this as the foundation for cell counting with deep learning. A core approach in cell counting with machine learning developed in 2010 is to count via segmentation. Here, we generate a segmentation map to predict, given the input image, and predict it as we would any other segmentation. The segmentation is computed using the dot labels. A Gaussian distribution is used to represent each cell with a small standard deviation. These are combined together into the segmentation image with a nice property that if two cells are close, their distributions would sum together and require a larger value to be predicted. Do not be distracted by the use of a normal distribution here as the segmentation map is not a probability distribution and does not sum to one. To train this model, the task is similar to regression of the entire image. The segmentation image can have values that are any positive number, so a cross entropy loss does not apply. Instead, simply subtracting the prediction from the ground truth and applying an absolute or squared loss will train the model. Here it is shown using an absolute loss. There are some challenges to predict the rare high counts, but adding a term to balance the error across all output values can be used to improve performance. Finally, to recover the cell count, we can sum the predicted segmentation map. Because each Gaussian sum to one, the total sum will represent how many Gaussians were predicted. As a side note, a square kernel instead of the Gaussian kernel can provide better performance, but we won't go into that here. This approach can be extended to multi-class cell counting as well. Simply use a multi-class segmentation network and sum the counting losses together. This example shows counting lymphocytes, normal epithelial cells, and malignant cells all at once.